By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a top 8 match for you from the Uthan Troll Cup. So lately I've been uh, sharing a lot of matches from this great tournament that was held in Leeuwarden and now we've reached top 8. So this is one of the top 8 matches and this is between the deck versus Green Stompy. Now the Green Stompy deck we've seen before on this channel, I believe uh, the upload was last Tuesday. So if you want to know more about this deck, you can have a look at that match. If you want to know more about the deck, um, I've actually made a playlist because <laughs> I realized that I have so many games with the deck. Why not make a playlist? So if you want to get to know this deck better, if you don't already know this deck very well, then you can click on the playlist. I also want to make a little side note. Um, I don't really know if this is your traditional the deck or if this is some kind of spin-off. The thing is when I watch these videos and I see, you know, blue and white and a lot of staples, you know, in your standard black splash, whatever, it, it to me it looks like the deck. But please let me know if it's not the deck. I'm always willing to learn. I'm always open to hear new things. Um, but in, from my perspective, at least, this is the deck. So we're going to look at a match between the deck and Green Stompy. So basically, classic control versus aggro. So let's go to game number one and see how this is going to end up. Game number one is about to begin. And on the left side, we see the deck player. On the right side, the Green Stompy player. The deck player on the player opening with the Tundra. The green player opening with a basic forest and a lot of else. And there's the strip mine, followed by a Mox passes turn here. Let's see another basic forest. A little bit hard to see there. Taps two green, Nas Asp, and Scavenger Folk. So a lot of creatures. This is what the green deck wants to do. And of course, the control player is trying to get control of this matchup. And here we see three, and there's an ice storm and a double attack here. And he's paying immediately for the Asp counter. So that means he's not taking any extra damage. He does take two damage though. And there's the Loa Library of Alexandria. And just after playing that Ice Storm, that's a little bit rough here for the green player. But I believe I see another Ice Storm in his hand. If you look closely, and there is that other Ice Storm. So well done here. Another attack, two more damage. And it's looking a little bit tough for the control player. On the other hand, he's still on 16. He's got plenty of time. Life is a resource. And there is the Mind Twist. And this could be a little bit deadly. I believe that was a Giant Grove or was it a Pixie? It's kind of hard to see there, but it was a Lunderer Elf as well. At least he loses two creatures. And this is great. This Sylvan Library, if it doesn't get disenchanted next turn, it might give him a chance to draw some extra cards. And if I were him, I would just draw two extra cards. Just take the eight damage. But then again, here we go, there's the disenchant. That's the thing with the deck, it has a lot of answers. So usually it has all the answers, but there's a lot of attacking force here going on. Two counters from the Asps in this case, and six damage here. And look at the deck player, he's on eight life. And he has to pay here the two mana for the counters from the Asp. Of course he has the factory now to block, so the question is what is he going to do? He can hold the um, the Argovian or the or the um, he can hold the the folk down to destroy. Oh, he's not doing it. He's just attacking with everything. Probably has a giant grove in hand then, activating Mishra's factory two two, pumping to three three, going to block. It's not clear what creature he's going to block, but I assume that the opponent has a giant grove in hand here, or perhaps a berserk. Because my initial thought was that he would keep the uh, scavenger folk back to sack to destroy the Mishra's factory upon activation. And they're having a little talk here. And look at that. <laughs> He's deciding to let the factory be destroyed instead use his uh, giant growth to deal extra damage that's actually not a bad idea not a bad decision because now he's on two and he has four creatures and the deck player only has one blocker he needs a balance if he can play a balance now he's back in the game 
Paying two could be a balance. Oh, this is so deadly. Oh, this is so deadly. Ay, 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 ay. I mean, the deck player has to sec a lot as well, but oh my goodness. Okay, he's going on one and a giant growth. Okay, and that's the victory. <laughs> For a moment there, I thought maybe the deck player is going to find his way out of here. Um, which which would have been cool as well. Um, but then again, that balance also worked against him. I mean, he had to play it, but he lost his entire hand. He lost almost all of his lands. So, yeah, that's what he had to do. Maybe, maybe he should have decided to keep the Mistress Factory as a blocker. Then again, it means you don't have any mana anymore. You don't have blue, you don't have white. I mean, pff, you can't play your spells. So, it seems like a logical decision here from both players. Um... Well played by the Green Stompy player, again showing that when you've got an aggro deck, you've got to play aggro, you've got to sack your creatures because you want to deal damage and that's what you want to do. So let's give these players some time to sideboard and then we'll see them back in game number two. Game number two is about to start and it's a deck player on the play after losing that first game. Let's see, oh, a Library of Alexandria turn one. And there we see an opening from the green player with a Lanor Elves. So maybe there'll be an Ice Storm next turn. So curious to see if the deck player can now do something. Maybe play a Swords on the Elves. And doesn't look like it. He's playing a Mock Sapphire. But look at that. Not another land drop from the green player. And he's playing a Nef Asp. And he's playing the Script Sprites. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's a 1-1 Flyer from green. And interesting, so he's kind of light on lands. Now that's not the worst thing. Ooh, but this could be the worst thing. That sorts to Plowseers on the lawn or else, meaning he cannot get to that three land, and he is top decking a Mishra's Factory. Attacking for two here, so he's going to 18. End of turn, paying the mana for the Asp. And drawing an extra card now from the Loa. And that's just deadly to see when you're playing against a control deck with an active library of Alexandria, then you know you know you have to do something. And there's the Chaos Orb. He's gonna flip on the Mistress Factory. And I think this is a good tactic if you already see that your play your opponent is light on lands, just you know, keep it going. And try to kill all his mana sources. And he's top decking another basic land, a forest. So at least that's something. And there's a strip mine. So he's going back to one land again. And that means that it's going to be very hard to get to three mana to kind of destroy that Loa. If he if he actually, if he has an Ice Storm. And there we see a Giant Grove. So he, he is doing some nice damage here in the meantime. And they're kind of discussing damage here. But I think everything's fair here. The deck player is on 10, so his life total is, ha is in half. And there's a Sarah Angel. Oh, and that's a big problem here for the green player. And the fact that the Sarah doesn't have to tap when it's attacking makes it such a difficult card to play against. So attacking here probably has a Giant Grove in hand or pretending to have one. There's the Giant Grove. There's a Sword to Plowsteers in response. So that means one life gained at least uh, for the green Stompy player, but that's not much. The deck player on eight life now. Playing a Demonic Tutor, probably going to tutor for an Ancestral Recall, at least that's the usual play. I mean, maybe he's going to tutor for another Angel, who knows. And he's not, he's just doing the, doing the basics, which is probably the best decision. Ancestral Recall, drawing three cards, attacking here with the Angel. And look at all that card advantage. It's just sick. Oh, and look at this. A time walk. Oh, man. Another attack. At least the green player is still on 13. And when you're still alive, there's still some kind of hope. Tapping four. And this is interesting. A Suchi. Perhaps that came from his sideboard. You don't see that card often in, in a the deck construction. And there's a Sylvan Library. If this Sylvan Library can stick, there's a Disenchant and an Avoid Fate. Nice. Sometimes I forget that Avoid Fate can also be used on, or can be used on any permanent that you own. It doesn't have to be uh, a creature. 
Anyway, there's another disenchant, and that's it. That's game. There's no way for the green stompy player to, to keep up with all this violence. There's just uh, too much removal, too much control, too much card advantage for sure, and the creatures from the deck were just too powerful, at least in this game. So the nice thing is here, we're going to get a game number three. So we're gonna give this player some time to check their sideboards again and make their decisions. And then we're going to game number three. Game number three is about to begin, and it's actually the first game that the green player gets to start, which is, of course, with an aggro deck very important here. And there are the script sprites here. Turn one, underground C, passing turn. Let's see. Second basic land, attacking here with the script, and playing an Argovian Pixies. And this card can do awesome things when faced with a Mishra's Factory. And the deck player a little bit in the tank here. He has to discard. Oh, that is trouble here. I wonder why he kept the hand then in that case. He probably has some very strong spells in his hand. But he's top decking an, um, a planes now. Ah, and there is a Black Lotus. Second the Lotus. And he's playing a Sarah Angel. So this kind of explains it. And now the tables have turned. So that Sarah is there. Attacking with everything. And he's actually taking all the damage here. And has to pay for the Asp. Drawing another card. Interesting that he didn't decide to block. He only wants to block if it's absolutely necessary, being afraid of that giant growth. Oh, 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 look at this. The, I, for me, this is already the play of the matchup. This went very fast. I'm going to do this again in, in slow-mo. One moment. So here we see the scenario again in slow-mo. So he's now playing his giant growth on the Argovian Pixies. So it becomes a 5-4. Then in response, he's tapping a plane, playing a Swords to Plausius, thinking, hey, it's dealt with. Bam, avoid fate number one. In response... Hey, he thinks I'm clever. I've got I've got backup. Bam! Avoid fate number two. In all honesty, I used to think avoid fate was kind of a crappy card, but after seeing this, my my respect for avoid fate has really seriously gone up. As a matter of fact, I need to play set now. Anyway, let's uh, let's see how this game continues. So the Sarah Angel is gone, and I believe the Argovian Pixie should be gone too, right? Or am I wrong? Because it's a four four blocking a five four. Or was he perhaps blocking the script sprites that was made into a 2-3? That could have been the case. Maybe he was not blocking the Argovian Pixies. Anyway, the deck player is now on 3 life. And that's it. That's game. Oh, so I think that play with the double avoid fade was really uh, key here in this matchup. Well, congratulations for the green stumpy player. You, you keep surprising me with how well you're doing at this tournament. Really, really, really impressive here. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, that was a very entertaining match to watch. So thank you to both players as well for sharing this. Um, next week I'll have some uh, more, I think my last game from the Ufton Troll Cup. So keep an eye on the channel. It's probably coming up next week. Uh, for now, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see more, you can click on the vids that are appearing right now. Um, you can also visit the channel. If you want to support me, if you want to support Timmy Talks, leave a like, leave a comment. Um, don't use your ad blocker. Thank you for that. It really helps. And uh, yeah, sub if you're not a sub yet. Always helps. We're now at 1,200 subscribers. So very happy with that and hoping to go forward towards 2,000 in 2020. So uh, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. And see you next time. Ikitus, ikitus, somba kazi.